Good morning. Good morning. So glad you all made it this morning. Somebody look at your neighbor and say you made it. You're going to leave different. So some of you didn't say that. Leaving different. So I don't know if I want to leave different. Different's not always bad, it's just different. How many know in the presence of God you should always leave different? Amen. You could even be better, better at good King James said. Y'all still hear your way? I want to test y'all. Turn to Matthew chapter 29. There is no Matthew 29. Oh, okay. So somebody's in there. <laughs> Matthew 29. Some of you didn't find the humor in that. That's all. Right. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, I'm going to talk to you about something that uh, the world has very little of, but uh, we have a whole lot of. And that's something called peace. Amen. But uh, how many know? Uh, can you put Romans fifteen thirteen up behind me? Romans fifteen thirteen. When she gets it up there, somebody yell at me. She's slacking. That, that computer's giving them a hard time today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it says, "Now the God of what?" Hello. Hope. That word there, hope, by the way, in case you didn't know. I mean, oh, when we hope, I, I hope they bring a pizza by today. You know, it's my free day. I hope they bring one by. I'm not so sure, but I'm hoping it gets here, you know. I, I, I hope the check arrives in the mail today, but, you know, it could come tomorrow or it's the mail or, or next Thursday. Who knows? I'm kind of hopefully there. Anybody with me? But I got good news. How many know the Bible is good news? Yeah. I've got good news. That word hope means confidently anticipating that the promises of God are yes and amen. So when I'm confidently anticipating, I'm like a kid that's been promised candy. You said you would be here at 2 p.m. with my candy. I am waiting here, and if you're, you said 2 p.m., you've never broke your word to me, I know it's going to be true, I'll be here at 155 at the latest, because I am going to get my candy, I can't wait for it to get here, it's going to be good, I'm anticipating it, in case y'all don't know I'm on a diet, you know, so... I get one day a week, so if I, it comes out in my preaching, I, I repent already and forget <laughs> But I mean, oh, that's anticipation. You know, some of us like to ride our Harleys or whatever you ride. And, well, you know, I anticipate. I, I don't get the time I used to have. I have a motorcycle that has over half a million miles on it. So one time before I ate the wedding cake, I used to get to ride. <laughs> some of you get that later. <laughs> but I anticipate. I want you to know the promises of God are something you can bank on. There's something that's sure that you can anticipate. The devils will spend all his time trying to steal your faith. Without faith it's impossible to please God. The Bible says come to God without your faith wavering. How many know he wouldn't warn you against something that you couldn't do? And the devil will beat you up for something that he convinces you to do. So he will try to get your faith to Waver. Is that really true? Do you think God really meant that? Well, that only works for preacher. That only works for so and so. Well, I'm going to show you in the Word this day. Where that, for one, they're for everybody. Okay, that's what you need to know. The promises of God for everybody. They work for everybody. Now, do you have to line up with the Word? Yes, but who's in control of that? You are. Okay. He says before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Don't be an idiot and choose the wrong one. You know, you got apple pie on one side and rattlesnakes on the other. You stuck your hand in the rattlesnake pit and got bit. 
Don't be shocked. Just repent, turn. Go get you some apple pie. It tastes pretty good. <laughs> oh my. And the God of hope fill you with just enough joy to get by. Just enough to make it till Wednesday. Come on, what's it say? If he's not a man that he can lie, what's the word say? Oh. All joy. That's what makes you when you're able to laugh at the devil like this. Ha, ha, ha. You're not going to ever walk again. Ha, ha, ha. You're never going to do this again. Ha, ha, ha. What? <laughs> because by his stripes I was here. Amen. I'm walking. I'm moving. So if you didn't know, he also told me that. I was in a wheelchair two years ago. He said, I've never come out of it. I'm doing pretty good. Am I still overcoming? Absolutely. Amen. But his word is true. Amen. I'm not a gimmick. I'm not a one-off. It's God's doing his word. But you've got to work the word for it to work. What did we talk about last week? We talked about getting the keys to the kingdom. You can have all the keys. But if you never put them in the lock, you don't unlock nothing. He went down and got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. What are you doing with your keys? How many like peace? Amen. How many like to be miserable? Anybody in here? <laughs> we got one. You know, sometimes crabs are like that. <laughs> I got... Let me finish that statement before Brother Bud strings me up. <laughs> We, at least we got a pretty good relationship. I think we're going to survive this one. But see, crabs, they don't know they're getting boiled. <laughs> and unfortunately, we get used to living a certain way that it just becomes our norm. Come on. And so a little bit of peace and a little bit of joy feels like a whole lot when that's all you know. But what if I told you God never intended for you to live that way? Amen. Here in Romans 15, 13, it says he'll fill you with all joy and what? Peace. Peace. Now, we're going to go back. We're going to look at a minute. How many know what I, what I think is peace from a biblical standpoint and what the world sees as peace is two separate things? You know, some people have a lot of peace and hope in their bank accounts. But in case they haven't learned through time, those things can crash. You know, Argentina one time was a very wealthy company. They had all the things going on down there. Then they had a complete economic crash and all their money became nothing. And there's pictures of people burning it to heat their homes. True story. They once had peace and comfort and that that, that was gonna be good enough. I was, someone say I still am, don't talk, but I was once a workaholic, and if I had, if I worked enough, I could have all the things I didn't have growing up. But you know what? None of those things ever satisfied me or brought me peace. I was always afraid of the what if that happened. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Anybody ever been afraid of the what if that happened? Yeah. And so you keep, you keep, a, you keep building for the day and when it happens. And guess what you don't have during that whole time? Come on. Peace. Peace. But I came to tell you that there is something that God gives that brings peace when even you don't understand it. You don't know how. I don't know how a brown cow eats green grass and makes white milk. But it don't stop God from doing it. Think about that for a little while. I don't know how he does that. Do you know when I worked myself into the ground, I had a lot of nice things. I paid for a lot of nice things. But I'm here to tell you God has taken better care of me since I've been on his payroll than ever when he took more care of mine. Now, do I, do I have a large bank account? Absolutely not. But, you know, we've been in church for going on 15 years. The bills have been paid and we've been exponentially growing. That's just how we do it, piece by piece, brick by brick, stone upon stone. Is it about what we have? No. But you know what? Without the peace of God, we couldn't have done anything. Because I'll give you a secret. You only do what's his idea, not yours. Amen. That's right. Amen. Now, I've done some dumb things in my life that were my idea, and then I wanted God to bless my mess. I know none of you have ever done that. <laughs> 
And guess what I lost during that process? Peace. Peace. But guess how I got it back? I went and repented of my ignorance. Maybe even a little bit of rebellion. And went and got right back under the blood. Took me a nice bath. Woo! First John 1 John 1.9, he's faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins. They wash me clean of all unrighteousness. All still means all. In case you didn't know, you can look it up in the Greek or the Hebrew in any other language you want. It all means all. Isn't that good news? But if I'm not careful, I'll let things creep in to steal my peace, steal my joy. And before you know it, I'm needing an infill. I'm needing my joy tank full. Now, I've got all kinds of uh, PBisms, as you all labeled them, throughout the years. And it's hard to be hateful when your joy tank's full. And if you'll be thankful, you'll keep your joy tank full. Simple sayings, but there's truth to them. Are you with me? How many notice it's hard to be hateful when you're thankful? How many notice when you're angry, you're not thankful? Come on, just process it for a moment. You And you don't want to give up the right to be right. I have a right to feel this way. They did me wrong. And so that's just going to how it be, it's going to be. I've got a question for you this morning. Is it worth your peace? No. Is being right worth your peace? No. Big smile. Come on, you're right. You have the right. But is it worth your peace? No. How many trust that you got? The Bible says God's scales are even. His way is just. How many would rather him fight your battles than you? But you're going to have to release it if you're going to allow him to do it. And you, you may get a lesson along the way. But you will have something called peace if you choose to do that. I can't tell, I know none of you have been like this, but I can't tell you how many discussions I've had with the Lord throughout the years. I pray I've gotten much smarter. Pastor Tammy says I'm too fast at ending things, with disagreements and things, because my peace is one of the most valuable things I have. Amen. And I guard it with everything that's within me. And I'm smart enough to know when I drop it. And I go right back and fix where I drop it. No matter what. Even when I'm 100% right. Do you know what? If I offend somebody, even if I didn't intend to, I can still apologize to them for offending them. That doesn't mean I'm admitting that I did something wrong to them. I cannot be responsible for how they take what I said. But I can say, I'm sorry that that hurt you. And genuinely mean it. Because as a believer in Christ, I should be sincerely sorry. Now, some people have caught on to my smart words throughout the years and go, you're yeah, sorry, but you still aren't admitting you did it. I said, well, I can't admit to something I didn't do. But I am sorry it hurt you. And I don't mean that sarcastic. But here you can say, well, you're being a little selfish, preacher. Maybe I am a little. But my peace is worth more than being right. And if I'll trust God, he'll work it out in my favor. Because guess what? I have a hope that his promises are true. Amen. And I can confidently anticipate them to come to pass. I live in a world that's upside down. Some of you live in it too. Some of you live in your own world. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm on the roll today. Maybe I need to go back down to the platform, brother Mike. I behave better down there. But we live in a crazy world. But why have you bought into the, the lie that you can't have peace in a crazy world? Why, has, why have believers bought into the lie that you can't have peace in a crazy world? Why have you been giving up your peace in a crazy world? 
One of the reasons is you want to be right. There's been, there's all kinds of atrocities going on. There's all kinds of things going on that are wrong. There's all kinds of things that are morally wrong and a moral decline. Where the Bible says that our weapons are mighty to pulling down strongholds. So either that's true, and I have my hope in that, or it's not. But if I get down there in the flesh, I'm just giving up my peace. Well, that's wrong. Well, then do something about it. I'm trying to. You're in the wrong realm. Come on. You're in the wrong realm. We are a supernatural being living in a natural world. We fight supernaturally. And when you learn to fight supernaturally, you'll have a supernatural peace and be able to smile and say, it's going to be all right. My God's got me. Amen. The devil is a liar. If his mouth's moving, moving, he's lying. And most of you know that, but it's in the wee hours of the night or the morning that he reminds you of things that steals your peace. And you start believing the lies of the enemy more than the promises of God. And I came to encourage some of you this morning, you need to kind of straighten your crown back up, get your feet back on the ground, and realize you've got the keys to the kingdom. And stop giving up your peace. I'll fill you with all joy and peace. You know another word for peace is rest. Anybody here feel rested this morning? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about physically. Do you feel rested supernaturally this morning? Do you feel like you're just overflowing? If not, you have a shortage. And that means you can go to God and say, I need a refill. Because you promised to fill me. And that word fill there means to overflow. Come on. How many know? Come on. I'm going to preach. Come on. How many know you can't give something you don't got? And the world needs what? Peace. And most Christians walk around being a thermometer. It's crazy out there, man. The people are mean and ugly, and I don't want to be around them. Well, I sent you into the highways and the byways to compel them to come. I don't want to go. I lose my peace when I'm around them. Well, I hate to break it to you. You probably didn't have enough to go when you left the house then. Come on. You didn't have enough when you left the house. I'm not beating on it. I'm telling you there's more. Amen. You need to get filled up yes. to overflow. Peter and John, when they walked by the man at the temple, they said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I got peace. I got joy. I've got healing virtue flowing out of me what I have. I give unto you. Amen. That's what the world needs. But we've got to be so full of it. And I'm not talking about the way the world says full of it. So full of joy and peace that we got something to give. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell a secret. Every time I start somebody here that starts talking about how bad the world is, how bad our nation is, I already know where their peace and joy meter is. It's sitting on empty and they're bobbing on, on the dangerous empty side. It's consumed them. Did I say you couldn't care about those things? No. But, well, I'll preach about that some other time. And they may abound in what? So they can, God's going to fill them so full of joy and peace that it's going to bump their hope level up. Woo! How many would like a little bump in your hope level? Amen. That confidently anticipating that the promises of God are yes and amen. I'm going to get so full of the power of God. 
It says, now how does he do this? Through the what? Power of the Holy Ghost. And I know all kinds of denominations that well, just say dumb things. But that word power is there is dominus power. That is a, some people, they break it down to dynamite. There's a lot more there. There's so much more to the Holy Ghost than people want to talk about. Come on, he's part of the Trinity. Come on, the Bible says he's the influence of, of riches and wealth. He's in the numbers. He's an army inside there. Well, how does he, he does this through the power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all still with me? And I myself am persuaded of you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness and filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Oh, good. We'll turn to John chapter 14, verse 27. We're going to get to our main text today. <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. How I many of he didn't stutter there? This is red letters. It's Jesus talking. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode in him. How many want Jesus to live in? All right. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. So how can you tell if somebody really loves Jesus? They're doing their best to do what the Bible says. The word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So he's like, listen, I didn't make up those rules. My dad did. These things I have spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, we were talking about him earlier, one's going to feed with joy and peace, come on. Which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. So if you're putting the Word in, how many know the Holy Spirit's going to help teach you things? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. I mean, oh, the world, don't worry about it, buddy. I got you, man. I'm going to take care of you. And they may take care of you for a while until your uh, stuff doesn't line up no more. How many have peace in your bank accounts? How many have peace in your job? How many have peace in your parents? How many have peace that you, you've depended on any of all of those things at some time in your life? And at some time in your life, unfortunately, they'll let you down. But I'm talking about a peace that will never let you down. So he goes on. Well, let me just finish reading the scripture here. Let not your heart be troubled. Now, does God tell you something that can't be possible? How many of you have ever let your heart be troubled? Be honest. Okay. Now, how many, when you read something like that, does the enemy come along and say, if you were a real Christian, your heart wouldn't have been troubled? My hands up. Okay? God tells you these things knowing that stupid is going to say stupid things. And he wants to encourage you to get through them. You still with me now? Y'all good? Everybody good? Okay. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, when when like for me, when the doctors come back and they have a lot of dumb, you dumb statements, you're going to die. You're, you know, don't you know, I don't go, I want to. Don't speak those word curses over me. I'm going to in Jesus' name. There's things that make you afraid. You're a human being in a human body with human feelings. The great news is so is Jesus. And he faced every one of them and he overcame them all. And he lives in you. And so does the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. First John 4, 4. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. So it's not the fact that you're going to, that you're never going to get afraid. It's what you choose to do with it after you try, after the enemy tries to make you afraid. And that's when you go back to I'm putting my hope in the promises of God. And that brings you peace. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I've told you before it come to pass that when it has come to pass, you might believe. Here, after I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. But that world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me also, even so I do arise, let us go. So he is going to build a place for us, right? 
The greatest peace you have, the if Jesus never, before I get ahead, if Jesus never did nothing else today, how many of you gave you eternal life? Amen. How many like having the peace knowing where you're going when this world ends? Amen. Amen. How many know there's nobody else that can offer that? That is the best thing that you have is the peace about where you're going to go. But how many know he didn't end there? John 10, 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Full of what? Peace, peace. joy, love. Y'all with me? And something called hope that makes you confidently anticipate my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. Listen, he's, he, he can give you peace in this crazy world. Matter of fact, I believe as, as the days grow closer, you're going to need more of it than you've ever needed before. But he said, all those that come unto me, all those that ask, I'm encouraging you to start going and put a demand upon the word and get it filled.